how has the pandemic uh, impacted uh, cloud adoption and your operations in India? And how are you taking the fight to your competitors, Google and Microsoft? Let me start with uh, the pandemic, right? And uh, first of all, it's a human tragedy and we're all seeing change across the society and we're all doing our best to help, right? So I think that's the first part. But if you really look at the cloud business, Vignesh, my, my simple headline on this is that cloud reacts well to uncertainty, right? And if you look at the last nine months, uh, we've actually seen cloud adoption accelerate by many years. And But the more interesting part is if you really look forward and dial the clock forward, in the next few years, we will see actually, you'll actually see a lot more acceleration of cloud adoption than we've ever seen before. And I see that for, say that for three reasons. Number one, the value proposition of technology and cloud has never been clearer. As I talk to customers, there's a clear realization that businesses that were thinking deeply about tech and cloud are going to come out of this crisis much stronger because cloud gives you the agility, the scalability, the lower and variable pay-as-you-go cost structure, which is what you need to respond to an event like the pandemic, right? So that's one. Second, if I really look at businesses in India, right, virtually across every business segment in India, we're seeing reinvention due to the cloud, be it insurance, be it banking, be it manufacturing, be it media. And discontinuities like this drive companies to take a step back and, and think about how do they want to run their business differently. And most companies today, most large businesses today don't want to run IT infrastructure in the old way, right, and carry technical debt, which will slow you down. You want an IT infrastructure and technology set up which scales up and scales down based on what your business demands to, to be it versus just the capex and the spend that you have. And then the third reason why I say that is we're now seeing a massive wave of innovation on the cloud. Companies are going beyond just the, the infrastructure to critical workloads like core ERP, SAP is an example. We're seeing a lot of data in the cloud and a lot of analytics and AI ML in the cloud. And customers today are realizing that the legacy storage hardware was great at creating data silos and locking you in into, into hardware refresh cycles. But if you want to move fast, make decisions, pivot, which is what the world around us now requires us to do, right? Given just how dynamic it is, you need to be on the cloud, right? So if I bring all of this together, the three points that I made, I just believe India is at an inflection point where we're seeing a perfect storm of digitization driven by uh, obviously the pandemic, but businesses across all sizes are now realizing the value of technology and cloud. What would you say about the hybrid cloud and especially the public cloud adoption? Do you think uh, enterprises and uh, companies are much more open to it now than before? Yeah, and as I said, right, we're seeing virtually every segment, every type of customer adopt cloud um, in, in, in the past few months. And it, it's a trend that's been going on. It's obviously gotten accelerated. Uh, in terms of the hybrid cloud, I would just say our view on this dish is that in the fullness of time, vast majority of companies will run pretty much all their IT workloads on the cloud. But again, this is not going to happen tomorrow, right? It's a journey. And customers will continue to run on-prem data centers um, for a few years, right? As they as they migrate to workloads to the cloud. Also, there are some workloads which require you to be closer to a particular setup or a workshop or a factory or even a restaurant, right? Um, but you want to be closer on the edge, right? So with that context, we're doing quite a few things. If you look at AWS Outpost, which we launched earlier this year in India, which basically brings the same AWS design infrastructure services, APIs, which are available in AWS regions onto your on-prem data center, right? AWS delivers, installs, maintains the infrastructure in the same way, right? And customers are really, really appreciating that. It's the same thing on VMware on, on, on AWS. Again, we bring the same interface, the same APIs, so that you get one interface and one way to manage this, right? So. Long story, over time, um, most workloads will move to the public cloud because it just gives you the agility, the scalability, the flexibility, the cost structure, the variable pricing, also a platform to drive innovation. But the journey will take time. And for that journey, we're making sure our customers have the tools to actually bring some of our AWS services onto their on-prem centers as well. Which verticals have you seen the most impact uh, during the pandemic? And are there any unorthodox verticals where you have seen uh, traction in? And I'm at least seeing two archetypes of businesses or segments. The first archetype is businesses where, such as travel and airlines or hospitality, where they're facing a challenge where revenues are coming down or revenues are slowing down, but there's an increase in need for customer support requirements as an example, because people are still calling them around tickets and travel and dates and so on and so forth. Right. So that's one archetype where business has slowed down a bit, but customers continue to stay engaged and need more and more support. The other archetype is where the opposite is happening, where you've seen growth like never before, 
and you need scalability. EdTech is a good example, e-commerce, OTT platforms where we've seen demand and growth like never before, right? But what's common across both of these is that you need, you need cloud, right? You need the agility, you need the scalability, you need to go up and go down based on what your business requires you to do, right? So we're pretty much seeing every imaginable business segment and vertical using AWS in meaningful ways. I can give you some examples of sectors where we're seeing a lot more acceleration. Media and entertainment uh, is a great sector to talk about Hotstar, right? Which is India's largest premium streaming platform. It's been downloaded over 80 million times globally. Yes. They're using just the highly reliable AWS cloud infrastructure. Insurance, uh, again, we're seeing a lot of traction and I'll give you two examples. Policybazaar.com, uh, it's large, the largest insurance marketplace in India. They use Amazon Poly. Uh, with their in-house IVR service, Zerodha, which is India-based, one of the largest India-based online trading platforms. They've migrated their IT infrastructure from on-prem to AWS cloud. Manufacturing and automotive, Ashok Leyland, uh, it's a customer that we've been closely working with. They've migrated to AWS. They've seen a 300% improvement in their data processing speed. Can you just help us, from your perspective, understand the significance of the second cloud region that AWS set to build in Telangana? Um, how will it prove beneficial to customers and how will it impact uh, your overall operations in India in the long term? Answer that by starting with our mission in India. Mission, uh, our mission in India is AWS is to empower builders and businesses to build a better India. And which basically means we have to bring the best of AWS to India, right? And invest to support hundreds of thousands of active AWS customers that we have in India across enterprises, digital businesses, startups, small and medium businesses, ISVs, government institutions, uh, public sector institutions, nonprofit organizations, but we have to continue to invest, right? And a big part of this mission is the commitment that we have to, to build India and build our capabilities in India and put the power of AWS cloud directly into the hands of our customers and partners. And our customer base, as I said, is growing. Uh, and we're seeing more and more customers today migrate mission critical workloads, uh, core workloads to AWS, right? And we are committed to staying ahead of their needs because we have to invest ahead of their needs and as we see growth. So with that context, uh, the new region, which is our AWS Asia Pacific Hyderabad region, is a second infrastructure region in second infrastructure region in the country. It'll consist of three availability zones, as we had announced at launch. It'll actually provide our customers the ability to architect their applications and to run in multiple India regions, right? Which allows them to get even higher fault tolerance and even lower latency across India. What is the strategy for AWS's uh, cloud growth in India? And there are three investments that I want to emphasize that we're making as part of our overall plan for India. First is building account and technical teams across our diverse segments, right? Enterprises, small and medium businesses, digital businesses, startups, to actually meet the customer's needs. We're quite honestly building India's best tech team to support our customers, right? So that's one. Second, we're building in what I call force multipliers, so professional services, training, uh, our startup programs like Activate, which help early stage startups to come to the cloud and, and start building. On the partner side, we're making a lot of investments. AWS today has the strongest cloud partner ecosystem in India. And we've recently made a few announcements, the AWS Cloud Garage at, uh, at Deloitte, uh, which is an innovation hub for customers in India. We did a strategic collaboration with Airtel a few months ago, again, to come together and serve small and medium businesses and enterprises in India. So again, we continue in, to invest in these force multipliers. And then the third is the investment that you just spoke about, the infrastructure region. But that's not the only investment, right? We, we, have, uh, we have an infrastructure region in BOM. Uh, we've obviously announced the Telangana region. Uh, we're investing in a lot of our capabilities to bring the best of AWS services to India. For example, Amazon CloudFront, which is our fast content delivery network, the CDN. We have 17 points of presence today across the length and breadth of Bharat. We have one regional cache. We have, if you look at Direct Connect, uh, again, investments in infrastructure, which allows customers to connect to AWS resources within an AWS region. India currently has six AWS Direct Connect locations across Mumbai, De Delhi, Bangalore, Chennai, Hyderabad. And then again, we continue to invest. If there are any unique uh, geographical challenges in the Indian region? I wouldn't say challenges. I would, uh, I would say opportunities, right? And they vary from segment to segment. So on the enterprise side, um, as I started by saying, right, which is across every sector, we're now seeing enterprises today adopt cloud. I think the runway or the opportunity is much larger than what we've seen in the last few months, right? So on the enterprise side, I spoke about banks. We've seen a lot of challenger banks like RBL Bank, Indescent. We've seen a lot of insurance companies, HTFC Life. I spoke about Zero Dha, Policy Bazaar, but there are many, many more enterprises today in India that need to move to the cloud much faster, right? So I think from our perspective, it basically means me and my teams have to move with a lot of urgency and 
help our customers move to the cloud much faster. If you look at small and medium businesses, uh, it's again a massive opportunity, right? India has 75 million SMBs today, which is the backbone of this country. And if I go back to our mission, which is we want to be a force that moves India forward, we have to help digitize SMBs. And SMBs are, there are a few challenges or opportunities as you think about SMBs in India, right? The scale and breadth of it, right? The 60% or more SMBs today are in tier two, tier three cities. SMBs need simple solutions, I believe. The S and SMB stands for simple. They need simple, bundled, low priced, high support solutions, right? So, how do we, they will not buy cloud native services. How do we bring our ecosystem together? How do we bring ISVs together? And we just launched an experiment called the AWS Digital Suite, where we got three ISV solutions together on the Amazon.in marketplace, where SMBs can actually come and buy that technology at a click of a button. 